Good afternoon, uh, new staff. I want to put together a very, very quick introduction to Genesis for those of you who have never used it. I'm just going to show you the most important elements, how to set up your classes with the right profiles, and then the things that we can do in each class. Uh, throughout the year, you can always play around more and learn more, but I'm just going to give you a very quick crash course because I know that you guys have had to take on a lot in the beginning of the year, and I don't want to overload you. So, uh, Log on to Genesis. What I'm looking at right now is the home screen. This is what I see when I click on Gradebook. Um, it's got all of my courses, Latin American Studies, both semesters, my AP History class, Study Hall, so on and so forth. Uh, let me point out what we can do in each class, and then I'm going to show you how to set up the Gradebooks, and then you'll be good to go. So one of the great things, once you figure out Lesson Planner and get that sorted, I can actually check out my lesson plan for this particular course by clicking on this little paper clip. I don't know why it's a paper clip, but there we are. So I can click on this paper clip and it's going to take me to my lesson planner screen so I can see what's going on. It'll automatically take me. You can see this is grayed out, right? It'll automatically take me to the current day. So if I need to see what it's doing for the day, I can just go to my home screen there and click on the, the little paper clip and it'll take me to my plans. Grades. So this takes us to the gradebook spreadsheet. You can also access the gradebook spreadsheet by clicking gradebook here, or you can click on this button and it will take me to my gradebook. I don't have anything in it. We don't have school yet, right? But uh, what you can do from the gradebook, you'll see over here in quick links, is you can create assignments. I'll go over that in a little bit. You can post attendance. You can look at the seating chart. Once again, you can also go back and look at the lesson plans for that class. It'll automatically take you to the day that you were on in Genesis. Back to the home screen. Another thing you can do is you can check out the roster. It'll take you to a quick sheet of your students, their IDs, and all this kind of stuff here. And then finally, the last thing that we can do is we can take attendance. Uh, I'm not going to see anything for today because there's no date for attendance. Let's just pick, I don't know, Friday. Uh, and I can take attendance from the screen as well. If you've never used Genesis, this is how we take attendance. You have to do it in the first 10 minutes of every period. It's really important to know where your students are at all times. If they're here and they're present, you can just leave it on present. If they're not here, you can change the absence. And I know that there's a lot, but they're either here or they're not here. Um, or maybe they came late to your class. Reserve put in cut class until you know for sure that they've cut class. Go check out your, your building secretary to find out if they were somewhere else before you assume that they're cutting. Relevant more so for the middle and high school. They might be at a chorus lesson. They might be at a dance recital. They might be excused in the nurse. They might be on a field trip, so on and so forth. Sometimes the secretaries will input things like field trip and school activity ahead of time, and that will automatically show up here as like a school activity. So it's just good to get familiar with this list and, and you know make sure you're taking good attendance. You can also leave comments to yourself over here, and then you post by clicking down here. So by looking at the home screen, this is what you know, this, these are the things that you can do. Now, if you would rather it start out on the Gradebook screen, right? You log into Genesis, you click on Gradebook, and you want to just get started, we can actually change the screen that you start on, so to speak, by clicking on User Profile. This is your user profile. You can put your name in here if you like, but you can change a few settings. One, you can assign a subject. I would leave the one that's already in there for you, though. Um, I've never had to touch or change these. They've always been correct for me. But you can uh, change which teacher automatically defaults to. You can change the gradebook screen. So mine starts on the home screen. If you want, you can have a default to attendance. You can have a default to the grading spreadsheet, whatever makes sense for you. And you can sort the order your gradebooks appear in the drop down lists. It's automatically by sequence, I believe, but you can change it to period if that makes more sense for you. And of course, it's not Google, so make sure you save everything. But what we care most about right now is we need to get your classes set up with the proper grading scheme. And this is going to change school to school, department to department. Um, see your department head for any specifics. I know for social studies in particular, we grade things by total points. So we need to create a profile so that when we are inputting grades and assignments, which I'll show you about after we do the profile, it is all set up for you. So go ahead and click on profiles first. It's right up here in this secondary bar. You are probably, unless you've already played around, you're probably just going to have default course profile and all the courses you teach will be listed under that one default course profile. It's fine if you want to use this. It's automatically set up to category weighting as opposed to total points. The difference is in total points, you have a total amount of points in the marking period and it just adds up over time. Category weighting is perhaps your homework is only worth 10%. Quizzes are worth 20%, tests are worth 50%, you know, whatever it is. Teachers use both in our school. I know the English department does weighting, the social studies department voted and we do total points. So if you, 
if you are given the freedom to choose whichever one you want, go with the one you're more comfortable with. But if you're not sure, ask your department head and they will let you know if there's one specific that they do. So we need to create a course, uh, a course profile, right? And before you do any assigning, you need to make a new one. What you would need to do is just click on copy and it's going to make a new profile. You'll know because it says copy at the bottom. I'm just going to put um, test just so I know that this is our fake one that we're playing with. So create uh, one for yourself. You can go ahead and start making a real one if you like. You'll notice I have three. I grade my three classes a little bit differently because I have different kinds of assignments. So I, I've created one for Latin, one for AP, and one for honors. And this would be more applicable for next year, but you can actually look at... Let me make sure I save it before I leave the screen here. You can actually look at last year's, whatever you did last year, and just copy those to the new year. So once you've got a profile that works for you, copy and paste that baby and just it'll show up in list profiles here. So you only really need to do this once. And if you grade everything the same time every year, you can copy last year's and just use it again. All you would need to do is reassign your classes. So once we've created a new profile, you're going to go into open. This is where we're going to change all of the little things. This is a one time gig as if all, all the setup that I've had you guys do lately. It's just a one time thing. So first you need to choose whether or not you're doing total points or category weighting. Like I said, social studies is total points, so I'm going to go with total points, but whatever works for you. I'll show you what it looks like on both sides. Most of these things, frankly, I would leave alone. Uh, they're automatically set to what you need. There's only a few things you need to double check that are on. You should absolutely, under display preferences, put display IEP icons, display 504s, and I would also display medical icons. They will not automatically appear for you. You may not see them, and then you may not know if you have kids with medical problems, peanut allergies, 504s that you need to pay attention to, IEPs. So please take the second and absolutely turn these on. They are absolutely crucial. I don't know why they're they auto default to off, but you need to put those on there. Um, leave this. Yes, your grades count for all four marking periods. So please make sure that marking period four grades is calculated calculated using assignments and marking period four. Most of the stuff you do not need to touch, but please change IEP 504 and medical to yes. You need to be able to see those so you can take care of it properly. Make sure you save before you move on. Grade translations. Next tab over from preferences. This is where you would change what your grades mean. So um, an A is 90 to 100. You can break that down and be more specific. You could do A minus 90 to 92, A 93 to 96, A plus 97 to 100, whatever works for you, right? And, and again, it's going to be different for elementary, secondary. Uh, so whatever it is that your school uses or what you plan on using. I don't actually use the rest because I teach 11th grade, but if you're a person that uses check pluses, check minuses, you can assign those grades here. Uh, outstanding, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. I imagine that's better for um, elementary school. If your class is a pass-fail class, I don't know if we have that many of those anymore, but pass-fail, all this kind of stuff. So you can change what the grades actually mean. Categories. This is where you would assign, uh, you would assign categories. Things like homework, classwork, quiz, test. So go ahead and click add new category. One, that doesn't really matter. And this is going to be for homework. Now, do you want it to be numeric? So when you grade homeworks, it's from 0 to 100. Alphabetic, I'm just going to assign a letter grade for it. Is it going to be on the check system? You need to figure this out ahead of time. I'm going to leave mine as numeric because that's what I use in the classroom. So I'm going to create my homework. Again, the, the, uh, the first number that we put in really doesn't matter that much. You need to put something in, but don't worry too much. I'm going to leave all of these alone. Okay, um, It's up to you. But you do have, and I, I tried messing with this when I first started, and it just got kind of messy, but you do have the option of dropping up to five different homework grades. So let's say that you have a seventh grade classroom, and uh, you know you struggle with some of your students not doing all of their work. Perhaps you've uh, bargained with your class, all right, guys, I will drop at least two homework assignments, your two lowest and or you know, the ones that you miss won't count anymore. So if you want to drop any grades in the gradebook, you can do that here. Uh, I don't tend to use that, but it's something that you may consider if you want to. You can change the grade type here if you decided after the fact you don't want a numeric. What is homework generally worth? It might be different every time, but let's say your homework assignments are always 10 points. You can change that here. So later when we actually make an assignment, it will automatically make the homework 10 points. You can change the back ground color. So when you're putting it in your Genesis and the students and parents can see this too, let's say all homework is red. You can change the font as well. Black looks fine on red, so that's fine. Save. All right. Then you can make another category. This one's going to be classwork. It's going to be numeric again. Create. Um, it's the I didn't even put numbers in and it changed it for me over here. Um, 
Let's make one for quizzes, so on and so forth. This is all up to you uh, and what you want to do. Very few, that's annoying. Oh gosh, I'm being silly, I'm sorry. The category code is what you would call it. So maybe QZ is for quizzes, description quizzes. There we go. Okay, um, and then you can go on so and so forth from there. Make sure that you save your categories and then we're good from there. So let's say we need to go and set up our profile now. I've created this, this fig profile. This is going to be for my Latin American class. So I'm gonna go into my setup. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in my Latin American studies grade book. And I'm going to change my course profile here. Yours is probably on default course profile to begin with. I'm going to change it to the one we just created, which is test, test, test. Remind me to change this back later. This is going to cause problems. So now it's on test, test, test. I changed my profile. This is just telling you what it is that you set it to, right? There's my homework, my classwork, my quizzes, so on and so forth. Okay, that's all you really need to do. I've created profiles. And then I've set it up by assigning my profiles, assigning my classes to whichever profile I want. You can make it easy on yourself and have one standard profile for all of it. You can split it up like I did, but you need to make sure that they're all assigned to something that you are comfortable with, whether it be total points or category weighting. So as you can see in the test one, I assigned my Latin American studies class for total points, right? And I came up with three categories. You can do more, you can do as many categories as you like. You can have participation. If you're a PE teacher, you can do changing, right? That kind of stuff. So that's all on you, that's personal preference. So let's go back to our home screen. We're gonna go into that Latin American studies class and now you can see as well, this is the profile that it belongs to. We changed it to test, 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 right? So we're gonna go in and we're going to put a grade in to my grade book. When you go into the gradebook, you can do it either from the home screen, clicking on it that way, or you can just navigate directly to gradebook up here. You're going to go to quick links, add assignment. And this is the screen where you will put in assignment. So the assignment name is going to be uh, permission slip. My students brought back their video permission slips. It's automatically going to fill in a certain amount of characters. I'm not going to count it for you, but it, it stops after some point. Right, so that's not going to show up in there. Now, let's say you have a really long title. You may need to shorten this a little bit. Permission slip. That's fine. This is the name of the assignment, but this is what's going to show up in the grade book. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. You can give a description if you want. It's not really that important, but the description will show up if you want to make it clear what it is that assignment was. When is it assigned? It's assigned on the first day of school. When is it due? Whenever you want it to be due. And then this is where those categories come in. Remember, we created three homework, classwork, and quizzes. Well, this one is a homework, and as you can see, it automatically changed my homework score to 10, which is what we had done in our profile setup. It's automatically going to choose the marking period for the start date. So because my assigned date is in marking period one, it's going to make it marking period one. But you have the option of changing it to however many marking periods you're teaching that course. Yours will say four. Um, I, this is a semester course, though, so it's only for two marking periods, which is why mine only says two. Grade type, it's numeric, but once again, I can still change that if I want to. Assignment weight, 1.0, meaning it only counts, uh, it counts for what it is. Some people like to do exams where it counts double, you know, where this is, this is actually a 200 point test, right? It's count double, guys. And this is where you would change the assignment weight if that's something that you do. Yes, you want to show it in your gradebook, of course, they need to be able to see it. And then finally, if I know that I'm giving the same assignment to another class, let's say I know I'm giving it to my other semester of Latin American studies, I can actually create... Uh, I can click on whichever class it's also going to belong to, and it will create that assignment twice. This is helpful if you're teaching in middle school, and let's say you have four sections of the same quote-unquote class, and you have the same assignment. I have two sections of AP World. They always have the same assignments, right? So if I create an assignment for AP World, I'll make sure that I toggle the other AP World class as well, so that they're getting the same assignment. When you're all done with your options on the screen, make sure you hit Save Assignment. It's going to take you back to your gradebook, and as you can see, here's our assignment. I had color-coded homework as red, you may remember. It's got 10 points is what it's worth. It's got the due date here, it's due on Friday. And you've got permission slip. That's that shortened column heading that I put in there. Now, if you need to input the grades, you just click on these little boxes next to the name. So Louis here, he did his permission slip. You click on the box, it'll take you to where you input the grades. All right, he gave it to me, so he gets a 10. Joel gave it to me, the other Louis gave it to me. Giovanni forgot it, all right, so he gets a zero. So on and so forth. You can leave a comment for parents to see and for students to see, right? So they're not in the dark about why they got a zero on something. 
if they were absent that day and they never got it or were not there to give it to you, you can just mark that that was absent. You should always, it's on you though, to remember to, to collect it from them the next day, or you can tell them it's on them as well. And you can turn that absent into a zero later on. Ink is incomplete, meaning they just didn't finish it, didn't do it. This is another way of giving them a zero. Exempt means they weren't even here for it. And you know what? It's not that important. They are exempt from this assignment. It will not count towards their final grade. And missing is another way of giving them a zero for it. So I'm going to give one as an incomplete and one as a missing, and you'll see the difference. One is an absent. So for Zoveda here, I put it as a missing. Notice how that gave her a zero percent on this assignment. It's like giving her a zero, just like I did with Giovanni. For Gary, he gets an incomplete. It's like saying a zero. You might want to use them as difference. So if parents call you up and say, well, you know, uh, Gary did some of it, but he didn't do enough to get any points. And so he gets an incomplete until he completes it. Or you might want to say, Zoveda never handed in the work, so she got a missing for it. Uh, or you might just want to say, he just didn't do it, I just gave him a zero. There are multiple ways you can do this. It is teacher and personal preference about whether or not you're going to accept them and change the grades later. If you need to change a grade but you can't because it's grayed out, uncheck it from over here, save the grades, right? And then you can go in there and change it manually yourself. Always make sure that you're hitting save on things. Now, if I were to have multiple uh, assignments in here, I could toggle between assignments, all of the assignments in this marking period here, but obviously I just have the one, so that's the only one that I can see. Once you're done with this, you can go back to your gradebook. It'll take you to the one that you were working in, and you'll see that the thing is here, all of the grades that we did are here. If you ever did missing or incomplete or absence, it's going to show this little marker saying it used to be missing, but now it's not. Uh, and it'll calculate the grade for you because I'm doing total points. They've earned 10 points out of a possible 10 points, so they get 100. If you're doing category weighting, it will calculate it by category. So if this is the homework category, he's gotten 100% of the homework category, he's got 100, so on and so forth. Now let's say that you need to uh, modify this. You can click either on, well, you, you just click on the thing here and you can change the grades. But let's say that you want to completely delete this. You know, I didn't mean to put it in this class or I decided I'm not giving it. You can click on the word, the, the thing here, modify homework permission slip. And then you can just delete it. I know that in uh, the sessions today, I said not to delete things in Genesis, uh, in, in Genesis unless you really want to. Well, I want to get rid of this. I don't want this as an assignment. My kids are going to freak out if they see they've got a zero before the school year has even started. Yes, I understand that it's been graded. By deleting, all grades will be removed. That's fine. So in this case, I actually want to delete this, and it will be gone. So again, to get to, to create an assignment, you go to Quick Links, Add Assignment. I think I already went over attendance with you, and you can always go back to the lesson book as well. But just to really recap before I end, you need to go into profiles. You need to create a profile. I'm going to get rid of this now that I'm here. You need to create your profiles, name them what you want. You can have one for all of your classes if it's relevant. If you plan on grading your classes differently or with different things, you can change that if you like. You can always just edit the default course profile with all of your things in it and so that they can all be the same. You go into open to change those settings. When you've changed the settings to what you want, you have to go to setup. And you need to assign it. So I need my Latin American Studies class to follow my Latin American Studies gradebook. Change profiles, and then we're good to go, and your gradebook is set up. That's all you really need to know for now. Um, I will mention if you are a homeroom teacher, this may not be applicable to most of you, but if you use Genesis for homeroom calculation, you get to homeroom by clicking on attendance, homeroom attendance, and you'll get your list of homeroom kids, and you do the same thing with the attendance. Except this one is easy. In the beginning of the day, they're either here or they're not here, or they're late to homeroom, okay? Um, at any point you get lost, you can always just click on gradebook. That's a nice home button in a way. It kind of takes you back to where you need to be. Uh, if you need to search up a particular student, you can click on student data, and you can search by last name, by school, by first name, all that kind of stuff. But make sure you're searching within the right school. That's your real basic crash course into Genesis. For those of you who actually use Genesis for grading, I know the elementary schools don't really use it in this way, but at least through 6 through 12, this is how you would set up your classes. They should already be in here. If they are not in here, you need to contact one of your administrators or Giancarlo Colosimo, who kind of runs all these online things. But um, this is how you would set it up for the beginning of the year. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. My name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-I, beard, as in the facial hair. Um, I met a lot of you at induction. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have a question. And if you need any more of these tutorials about things, I am certainly willing to make them for you. So reach out if you need me. All right. I hope you guys have a great start to the year and I will see you tomorrow.